the physical meanings would be a little bit different, right? In the mixture, it means the, the term rho A in the mixture represents how much mass of A per volume of the solution. So volume here is the volume of the solution or volume of the mixture. So of course, if you have more A in the solution, rho A is supposed to be great number. If you have small number of A in the solution or the solution is diluted in A, rho A is supposed to be small number. Okay? But if you have only A in the solution, that means your solution turns into pure species A, then rho A becomes density of the species A. So this value in the mixture becomes this value in the pure species. You can say that this one would be limit, upper limit of the rho A, right? Okay. Now, if I write down rho without subscript A, okay, for pure species, suppose I call this one density of the system, okay, so this one would be my density of the system. If my system is pure component, then rho A and rho supposed to be the same number, right? But if I have mixture, density of the mixture is not equal to density of A anymore because right now we have another species in our system, okay? So if I have mixture, suppose I have binary mixture, A and B, okay? And I want to find out rho or density of my mixture. How can I calculate density of the mixture? By definition, density of the system would be mass of the system divided by volume of the system. Okay? If the system is pure, mass of the pure species divided by its own volume becomes its density. But if the system is not pure, now the mass of the system here supposed to be mass of A plus mass of B, right? But the volume itself is still volume of the mixture or the volume of the solution, okay? So if you take division here, mass of A per volume, According to that definition, mass of A per volume of the solution, it becomes rho A. On the other hand, mass of B per volume, it becomes rho B. All right? So, the density of the mixture can also be interpreted as what we call total mass concentration because this one is considered as con concentration of species A. This is concentration of species B. You add them together, you get concentration of overall system or total concentration. All right? Now, let's start it over. If you have mass of A and you take division by 
total mass or let's say total mass of the solution. Okay. This formula here or this term is a little bit it is familiar to you guys. It is called mass fraction. Okay? In this course we will use omega to represent mass fraction. This is mass fraction of A, so it is omega A. Okay? So from this definition, if you divide the numerator by total volume of the solution, also divide the denominator by volume of the solution. The numerator, mass of A divided by volume, you get rho A. The denominator, total mass or mass of the system itself divided by volume of the system, that's total concentration. So you get another relationship between mass fraction and mass concentration. Okay? If you do the same thing for omega b, you get omega b equal to rho b equal to uh, divided by rho. You add this thing up. We know that summation of omega i is supposed to b1, right? So therefore, what you have next would be summation of rho i is equal to what? Is equal to rho. So physical meanings of this equation would be summation of mass concentration of all species in your system should equal to total concentration of your solution. All right. Okay. Now, so I'm going to stick with the unit for mass for concentration to be mass concentration for this moment. Then I'll derive the whole equation related to. Uh, mass transport and then try to change the unit from mass concentration to molar concentration later. Okay. When we consider molecular transport in momentum or in energy. We normally set up simple system to be one dimensional first. Right? For momentum, we have two plates. Let's say you have up, upper plate here is fixed, no movement. The lower plate here, you move with certain velocity and you get velocity profile. From that, we derive a new law. For energy transport, you set up the piece of solid, set that the upper part would have higher temperature or lower temperature, lower part here has higher temperature, there will be energy flux and then there will be temperature profile. That is a derivation of Fourier law. For mass, we do the same thing, okay? But the system is a little bit different. If you have a cylinder, Let's say, if you have cylinder here, up here, suppose I have a piece of SiO2. SiO2 is a solid. Um, in the structure, it is a piece of, like a piece of glass, okay? But inside the solid here, there will be small void that can allow small molecules to pass through, okay? So suppose 
I, I use a piece of silica here as a plug to put on top of a vessel. And if underneath here I have hydrogen gas, hydrogen gas is small molecules. It can pass through small pore inside a piece of glass until going up here. Okay? And if I enlarge the picture of a piece of silica here to be this picture, so this would be my piece of silica. Okay? And I know that right now underneath here I have a species that has ability to pass through this piece of silica. If I call hydrogen here to be a species A. Okay? And suppose hydrogen can dissolve or can penetrate into the piece of silica. The concentration around here, it means that there's an atoms or molecules of hydrogen dissolve into a piece of silica. Around this area, you can calculate mass of hydrogen per mass of overall mixture, right? In this area, it becomes mixture. It's no longer pure silica because you have part of a molecule of hydrogen dissolved in it. So it's turned to be mixture. So if you have mixture, you can calculate the fraction or mass fraction of hydrogen in this mixture. Suppose this is called omega A, zero. Okay? Now, up here, on top of this plug, if I have a gas or air, they can flow through over the top of the piece of glass. So any hydrogen that can move through this piece of silica, once it reach top portion of this piece of silica, it will be swept away. So therefore, concentration of hydrogen up here supposed to be kept at zero. Okay? So I'm going to say that omega A up here is zero. So if your system is just this thickness, this layer is considered as your system. Within your system, right now you have two points, at least two points, that have difference in concentration. And difference in concentration induce mass transport. So therefore, there will be a flux of A moving from high concentration to low concentration portion of the system. Okay? So here would be mass flux of A. Once you reach the steady state, concentration, that, that's, once you reach the steady state, there will be molecules of A everywhere in this piece of silica because it moves through the pores up to the top. However, its concentration down here, you may have high concentration of A. Up here, you may have lower concentration. So there will be gradient of concentration in your system. If you find out the fraction of omega A with respect to position in your system, you should be able to draw out concentration profile. So this line is supposed to be concentration of A as a function of, let's say, y, if the direction here is y direction. 